Hi, I'm Exo, and today we're going to go head to head. This video is about the remote multiplayer functionality that's built into Exodus. We're going to jump right into it. Over here, we're going to come over to our platform category. We're going to change it over to playlist. And we're going to go to Exodus Remote Multiplayer. These are 326 games that have been set up that you can play head to head or co op, depending on the game. Uh, with or against your friends. Now, these games are generally set up to use, use either a serial no modem cable or IPX. There are a handful that could use dial-up modem that we've gotten working. It's a different challenge for those, though. Um, normally, this would be like a LAN party. You would have set it up. But using DOSBox, we can emulate over the internet to an IP address. And so you can play what would have been a LAN party against your friend who's across the world now. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at how that works here. If we come down here, let's go to a game like Blood. I talk about it all the time. Probably my favorite first-person game. We're going to start that up here. Give it a moment to mount that CD. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and start it twice. Because we can play against ourselves on the same machine by pointing it to the local address. So, we're going to go number five for a network multiplayer. We'll come over here and do the same. Now, the host is going to be the person that is hosting the game, and the other person will join. The primary difference here is if you have trouble connecting one way, try it the other. It could be something to do with a blocked port or not having port forwarding set up on your router. Uh, the host needs to have that set up or it might act up. Uh, you can see here it says you must have port 213 forwarded to the host machine or it will not work. So I'm going to hit host game. I haven't done on this computer yet, so I'll allow access. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say join the game. Now, I've designed it so that it will go and find out your IP address for you and your LAN play IP for you. Uh, in this case, I went ahead and blanked them out so that I don't have people uh, trying to hit my home IP address here. <laughs> but you would take that IP and give it to whomever is joining. Now, some games are for two people, so you give it to the one guy who's going to join. Some games support up to eight people, so seven people could join using your IP address. It then gives you specific instructions. It says, hey, press the key to launch setup, then choose the following. Run a network game, set the number of players, launch blood. That's pretty straightforward, but some games are not straightforward. Some games are convoluted how you get them running, especially the early ones. There was no standard back then. Now, what you can do if you want to test any of these games or play on a local machine is 127.0.0.1. And that is always your local machine's IP to itself. You can see the IPX server has already been started over here on the host side. So I'll hit enter on the join side and it says, hey, look, successfully connected. Um, and then it says press one if it, can, if it was successful. So it's telling you successful, but it can't, it doesn't know, it just can tell you. So we're going to go ahead and hit one. And now you're going to get exactly what to do on the join side. We're going to run a network game, choose IPX compatible, and then press F10 to launch after you've chosen the settings. Let's go ahead and get the game going here. All right, we're going to come down here and go network game. Two player sounds good. Change player name, Caleb. Sorry, Caleb. I'm going to be EXO. And we're going to launch. It's waiting now. So we're going to tell the join guy to go to network. He's going to change. Caleb can fight against me. That's fine. And we're going to also hit launch. Found. Now the host is going to go to new game. Uh, that all sounds good. We'll go down to start game at the bottom. Let the bloodbath begin. Now he's right outside there, so if I step back a little bit here. Oh, do I not have a slurgan yet? Yes, I need There we go. Let's get him up here real quick. We're going to blow this guy up. Watch on the screen on the right. There's a little guy that looks like he's hanging on the wall. Oh, 
said I could look over on the other window. And now I'm running around outside. come down let's start it with a different kind of game how about red alerts we'll launch that one twice you'll notice uh, when you start red alert you can pick from what disc you want to have now it's always gonna mount all four discs there's a as it shows here the allied campaign Soviet campaign that was what came with the base game but there was an Aftermath uh, add-on pack and a Counter-Strike add-on pack. No matter which one you pick, all four discs will load. Control F4, as it shows down here in the note, will cycle through them. So if you start with the Allied campaign, decide, eh, I want to go play a Soviet mission now. Go back to the main menu, pick Soviet, it'll say enter the Soviet CD, Control F4, you're off to the races at that point. Uh, for multiplayer though, we don't need to worry about any of that. We'll do 5-5. Five, five. Post and join over here, 127.0.0.1. We are joined. Again, it tells us exactly what to do when we get in there. We get our. Playing with that. Reinforcements. Now, on the left side, it's the first time the game's ever been started, so it goes right into a mission. So we're going to abort. Battle that. control. Terminated. Click multiplayer. In this case, we're going to do network. That's what I mentioned in the beginning. Uh, okay, so on this side over here, then we're going to come over this side and we're going to do a multiplayer game network. You can already see XO has shown up. XO and DOS, how's that? They can already see each other. Oh, let's pick a different side here. How about uh, Germany? Russia. Germany has got to have a different color here. Yeah, let's see. Pretend we look over here. He's going to be red. And we are going to say new game. And that makes the game. Right? Now we're going to come back over to this game. Go to Exo's game and hit join game. Now we have both people in the same game. Yeah, let's pick a bitch. It doesn't matter where we're going to be. We're not going to play very long. Unit count. We'll start with 11. Uh, you can add some AI players if you want. Uh, you can make a capture the flag if you want. You can make the uh, shroud, the fog of war, come back if you want. But for now, let's just click OK. And here we are. Yes, sir. Affirmative. Let's get this. Affirmative. Now to get this guy in pass. Waiting on affirmative. Pass. Ooh, that is sensitive. Acknowledged. Yes, sir. Affirmative. Options. Let's get these tanks. Waiting again. order. And let's see. Acknowledge. Let's see if we can find each other real quick here in the game. We're just gonna grab everybody that's not. Ooh, man, that is sensitive. Yes, sir. Awaiting orders. Reporting. Awaiting Vehicle. orders. Reporting. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Awaiting orders. Acknowledged. Ooh. These guys have the little G. Reporting. Affirmative. Here. Acknowledged. Now this map map may be fairly big. I have got no idea. Waiting order. It needs to be a very, very uh, long process to find each other. It doesn't help that in the beginning, until you have a base, you've got no radar, you've got really no idea where you are in the map. Vehicle kind of... Construction options. Building. You gotta get a power supply going. If you have not played these games Building. before, they are really fun, in my opinion. Uh, Reporting. Affirmative. They. Construction complete. Long game. 
In other words, the longer you play the game, the more you get out of it. The certain construction. Oh, yes, sir. Affirmative. Building. It is hard to go back and forth. Construction options. Building. Uh, we did get both going here, though. I don't want to waste too much time looking for myself. I know I'm in the same game. Uh, we saw it back on the menu. Uh, our tanks may be going at this for a while. I don't know what corners we started in. I don't know. Yes, sir. Acknowledged. Where we can go from here. Looks like those guys did not get that far from Acknowledged. Me. Let's go ahead and kill this guy here. What else do we have that would be fun to uh, kick off? Of course, there's Doom and Descent. Um, Doom's going to be just like Blood, though. We're going to see each other. We can run around and shoot each other. Uh, you can play Dungeon Keeper against someone else, which is a lot of fun. Uh, you both build a dungeon. I did a whole video recently on Dungeon Keeper. You try to lure monsters away from each other uh, and become your minions. Of course, you got lots of flight sims on here, uh, which are pretty neat. There's some really cool ones, like uh, Apache and Hind can work together. So if we come up here, we'll find Apache right here. If you if one person installs Apache Longbow and the other person installs H-I-N-D Hind, let's see, where is it at? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. We're almost there. I can say the alphabet. There it is, hind. If you install both of them, um, when you start it, it will ask you, hey, do you want to play Apache versus Apache? Do you want to play Apache versus hind? You can actually do two Apache versus two hind and have like a, a co-op or two-on-two -two battle. I think you can even do a two-on-one battle. Uh, basically, anyone who joins whatever game they're running, that's the team that they'll be on. It's a pretty neat little feature. I got one. Uh, really, of course, Mech Warrior games are a lot of fun to play. Uh, multiplayer, Magic Carpet's pretty unique for me. I mean, I love the FPS games and the strategy games, but I like the multiplayer games that are just different. They're unlike any other type of games out there. Um, the one that really stands out to me is Sopwith. It was an old flight simulator game. Uh, this is the 2000 edition, but there was multiplayer all the way back in the 1984-85 version. It was a real trick to get this game working uh, in that you we had to actually boot into um, a virtual drive that loads up. Um, let's see. Yeah, so this was going to be like a serial modem. So host on this side, join on this side. You can see here it's actually booting. So this is a virtual drive. We're going into real DOS. And there we go. We're actually playing a game. cooler if I knew how to play it. If we right click we should be able to go down to media. There's no manual for it. Oh man. Uh, it might be it might be in game and you don't do uh, let's see here real quick. I'm curious now. We'll do
Well, let's see. The Star Control games. You can even play Street Fighter remotely. I make no um, claims for how well it will run. Theme Hospital is a really unique one in that you both make a hospital. You both uh, are bringing patients in, but your hospitals are on the same map. So at a certain point, if you're buying land to expand your hospital, you can start kind of butting up against your opponent. So you kind of need to buy land quicker, but land is expensive, which means you've got to get expensive patients. So there's a, it's a little bit of a race to expand first. And I think that you win by um, making a certain amount of money before the other player does. You've got Top Gun Fire at Will, which is a FMV style flight simulator. Towers, which was a shareware style game, um, little um, strategy role playing game. Transportation Tycoon, uh, you're going to get to build cities. Um, I don't think I've played that one before, so I don't know if you are competing directly and you can see each other or if you're just on two different maps. I would imagine you can see each other. I didn't real. I forgot that Tyrion had a multiplayer mode. That is too cool. Um, I still enjoy exploring the pack and discovering. I mean, I set that game up for multiplayer, but I never played it, so I had forgotten I had it um, working. And now I really want to find someone to play Tyranny with. Like, I don't know, are you? Is it co op mode? Uh, you know, it says play mode is co op multiplayer. So it looks like maybe you both get to go at the same time shooting. That's pretty cool. The Witchhaven games are a lot of fun. They're like a Duke Nukem uh, first person game, but there's a heavy role playing aspect to them. So that brings us to the end of the list of remote multiplayer games that are supported. As we find more, we constantly add them. Uh, to determine these, we did everything from looking at lists on sites like Moby Games uh, to just going through as we were installing them and taking notes. If we have missed a game, please come on the Discord, let us know. It will be added, and with version 6, we will have fairly constant updates. It will not be three years until the next time we put out an update. The updater allows us to add games, update games, change games, uh, add manuals, add scans, anything we want to. We have total control in the updater. Thanks for watching. Talk to you next time.